My ex-boyfriend once told me that girls can never be smarter than boys. He would tell me that women and men are different and that's why women have to obey men like slaves. And actually, I was a slave in our relations because he wouldn't let me meet with my friends. He wouldn't let me speak in public if the topic of discussion was believed to be for men only. He wouldn't let me express my own opinion like I do now if he didn't agree with it, and he would certainly disagree with this one too. He would force me to do whatever he wanted me to do because he thought he know what is right just because he is a man. And my role in those relations was just to be a humble and obedient female being who would entertain him. As I've been brought up by parents who never made me feel humiliated or ashamed of my gender, I never obeyed and I always stood upon my own rights. At the very beginning of our relations, I thought that limiting me in my freedom of speech and telling me what to do, giving orders, was the scariest thing to happen, and I was okay with that. But after my resistance, because I wasn't used to such a behavior and attitude, I started resisting. I didn't obey, and he understood that he needs to do something with that, and he started abusing me physically. At the very beginning of our affair, I thought that it would be fine, but at the end, it wasn't. We were dating for more than a year, and for the whole course of our relations, I was loving, patient, and obedient. When we broke up, he was blackmailing me and threatening me that he would kill me if we didn't make up again. And uh, the last time we met was when he confined me and didn't let me out of the building for almost six hours where he physically assaulted me. And this wasn't for the first time. After this incident, I reported to police where his grandmother said that they would kidnap me and force me to marry him so he wouldn't get into jail. The sad fact is that my story that I just told is not unique or something extraordinary in the society I live in. Women in the society and my country suffer from domestic violence, from rape and murder. Some girls don't continue their education after they finish school. Some girls don't even attend high school because their parents believe that for the girl, marriage and building a family is more important rather than getting an education. In Kyrgyzstan, women really suffer from kidnapping and forced marriages. And this year, a girl named Burulai was murdered in a local police department office right after the murderer kidnapped her and tried to force her to marry him. Even the presence of police officers in one building with them didn't help to prevent this tragedy. The main reason of this problem is that the society believes that each gender has to comply with its own gender roles, masculine for men and feminine for women, that women should be gentle and obedient and men are strong. The society and people living in such a community raise uh, the next generation by telling them that this is right and this is wrong, that there is one way to behave for the girls and another way to behave for the boys. Children are never given a choice and opportunity to choose for themselves who they want to be. So our main goal is to provide a variety of choices and give them an opportunity to choose for themselves who they really want to be. And returning to my own story, some of you might ask me, why did you allow him to abuse you for such a long time? Raised in a society where people tell me, especially many of my relatives, that women should be obedient, women should be loving, women should be good wives to their husbands. And I wanted to be this woman because I thought this is what a real woman is and I wanted to be accepted by my society 
because they believed in it too. And that was just making me ashamed of my gender. But I was lucky because I was raised by parents who told me that at the first place, you are a personality. You are not a traditional, conventional girl. And because of that, I met a man who now respects me and treats me equally. So, a lot of work has been done, and you know that it's being currently done to eliminate gender-based discrimination. And the project I'm currently involved in was developed in response to question, what can be done about the current situation and how can we contribute to gender equality? And when we thought about that, we thought that we should do something mind-blowing, something that everyone in the country will talk about, something that will combine national pride, latest technology, and fight for women's rights. We formed a group of young women who are now building the first ever satellite of Kyrgyzstan. So now, in Kyrgyzstan, there is a space satellite building school, which is also known as Kyrgyz Space Program. And how did it start? The idea of launching the first Kyrgyzstan satellite belongs to Viktor Skender and Renat Tukhvatshin, who are the founders of Klop Media. It is a web-based media outlet in Kyrgyzstan, which is very famous for its journalist investigations. On one of the events, Viktor Skinder, he is also a TED Fellow, he got to meet Alex McDonald, who works in NASA and promotes other people. Uh, he promotes that they should start a space program by launching nanosatellites, because now it has become comparatively cheap to launch them into space. So when Renat and Viktor thought that they should bring this idea to life, they gathered a team of brave adventurers who were ready to put all of it into action. So the only criteria to be chosen for the project was to be a woman and have a strong desire to participate in it. All of us girls are really different and we were really surprised by the number that we have now. There were more than 100 applications of young girls and women who wanted to participate in it. And all of us really different because we have school students some study at universities and some work like I do. And we come from different majors and specializations and most of the girls never studied engineering or programming. Nevertheless, all of us want to build and launch the first Kyrgyzstan satellite. In order to build the satellite, we had to learn something new and we acquired some new skills. So the first thing we learned was to solder. Oh, I really enjoyed it. And on our first day, we assembled flashlights from LEDs and we soldered them by ourselves. So as you can see, girls soldering on the pictures. And we made this. We also learned to design 3D models and print them on a 3D printer. Yeah, we made this by ourselves too. And we also learned to program on Arduino microcomputer, which can be seen here. It has a variety of purposes and can be used, for example, for ultrasonic range measuring device, which can evaluate the distance to an object. Arduino will collect and display all the information as it is programmed. We were also learning how to use the breadboards. Breadboards are special devices that can collect circuits without soldering them. This is very comfortable. And our girls managed to do a pulse sensor and experiment with it in order to uh, have the pulse rate measurements. Also, one of the tasks was to work with a photoresistor. Water resistor is a special device that measures the brightness of the light. And we connected it to Arduino and programmed the LEDs in such a way that they would use different colors depending on the brightness of the light in the room. So this is our girls working there, yeah. So many people 
they get really excited when we tell them what we do, that we are launching the satellite. And they start imagining that we are launching really huge satellites, and they get really surprised when we tell them that there are nanosatellites, and we are going to launch CubeSat and TubeSat. And they are the size of my hand. And many countries now establish their own space programs by launching these types of satellites into space. And we were inspired by their examples. So who inspired us? Countries like Mongolia, Lithuania, and also uh, Bhutan are only one of the countries that established their space programs by launching them into satellite. The Bhutanese CubeSat, Bhutan 1, was assembled by three Bhutanese students who were pursuing their master's degree at Kyushu Institute of Technology of Japan. The satellite of Lithuania, Lithuania Sat-1, was assembled by more than 300 people, scientists, students, engineers, and programmers. The Mongolian first satellite, Mazalai, was assembled by three young scholars of National University of Mongolia. And actually the fact that young scholars and students can assemble them gives us a proof that it's not really too sophisticated to do that. So why can't we do it too? The only difference is that the previously mentioned satellites were mainly or only built by boys. That's why we decided to have a woman-only team to assemble and launch the first satellite of our country. Besides having the scientific purpose, it will also address social issues in our country and we believe in the region as well. We want to inspire people, especially the youth that was brought up in a limited worldview of masculine and feminine, that there are numerous ways to behave and act. And your gender doesn't determine your work. And we want to prove that girls are capable of building and launching the satellite, which is believed to be a truly masculine work. So to all the youth, men, women, girls and boys, always believe in yourself, no matter how crazy your ideas are, or if people say that your ideas must be determined by the gender and your work should. It's not true. You can reach us, contact us, and find us, so we will help you to bring your ideas to life. Let's invent and make a world a better place for everyone together. Thank you.